All right, guys, got a gameplay for you today. It says I'm playing Form. I don't know that this is actually Form, but he does kind of play like him. I think I think Form runs this stuff, this wide nine stuff. And so uh, we're gonna do a little breakdown for you. Hopefully, you enjoy this. Um, haven't you know? You know, just kind of wanted to break this game down. I made some some good plays, some bad plays. I think he would say he would made some good plays, some bad plays. Uh, both of us got a little lucky at certain points. Both of us got a little unlucky at certain points. Um, this is my playoffs and just wanted to kind of break down this game and I wanted to talk about um, I'm not going to break it down too much here. I just wanted to kind of talk about uh, what I was thinking as I was playing this. This is really the first time that I've played anyone that has any like what I'd say level of notoriety since I played young Kiv um, last week and uh, I did a full breakdown on that really got in detail and kind of explained some of that stuff um, and so as I was kind of loading this game up and I saw, I was, uh, like I said, I was playing for him. I just know he's a YouTuber and seems like he's a pretty decent player. Um, I was thinking to myself, okay, you 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 cannot play, you know, you cannot play the name. You got to play the game. And even that thought right there, uh, automatically you still are kind of like playing the name. You're, you're still not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now you'll see right here, um, just kind of go into my, my kind of standard script here. You know, my first four or five plays, pretty much always, I'm going to start with the RPO. I'm going to go to corner strike or double corner. I'm going to go to Durham. I'm going to show my main plays. And the reason I'm going to show them is I just want to see how you play them. I want to see how you use them. I want to see the adjustments you're making behind it. And he really didn't do a whole lot, honestly, from an adjustments perspective. Like, I just didn't feel like... I was ever, I mean, and maybe he felt like I wasn't good enough to adjust to. I don't know. Um, but anywho, so right here, a nice little catch from Calvin. He manned him up. Got it. That route gets open even if you man it up um, sometimes. So it is what it is. But I feel pretty good right now on the drive. I feel like Durham, honestly, ultimately, I feel like the way he's playing defense, he just is going to really struggle to stop this play. I just really feel like he's going to struggle to stop this play. And so we go to it. <laughs> Um, so we go to this play and as you can see, you know, we get seven. Now I want to get into, uh, defense. Okay. So he's in a weird formation. I've literally never played this formation before. I don't think I heard one guy talking about it, um, that I did a coaching session with, but it, it really was like, I just never played it. So I was trying to think of how to defend it. He actually had some cool stuff out of this. Um, I, overall, I just think that this offense is, I mean, it's just, it's good. I mean, there's certain things about it. that's really good. One of the things right off rip here. He's going to do something. Like I said, I just had never seen this, so I didn't know for sure the adjustment. But if you watch here on the left-hand side, he's got a touchdown. If you look at this real quick, so you see how I'm in this base cover three show, and I got Randy Moss. He's got Randy Moss on that post. Now, if he was on a hash, he probably throws that for a touchdown, okay? Because um, I'm playing cover three. I want to be in cover three because I think cover three is the best base coverage in the game or cover four. But it is susceptible to things like that because those outside quarters and outside thirds will bite down on quarter routes so well. Um, and so... Already, I'm like, okay, I got to think a little bit about that. So what I do here on the left side, if you look, I deep half this corner. Now, normally this works, and he was – I don't know for sure why. There was random moments in this game where this wasn't working. That's an interception. Kind of frustrated I didn't catch it. But honestly, in this game, I feel like if you try to click on and go for the interception, maybe this is just me, but if you try to go for the interception and they don't have lurk artists or pick artists, which Barber, Rondé Barber does not, they literally just get – destroyed their KOs completely dumb out so off the rip here I'm thinking okay this is pretty good defense I'm gonna blitz him here just kind of see um but I'm dropping this three wreck out now he's able to pick this blitz up out of this for the most part but actually get the pressure there and he throws this flat now uh this is I mean it's okay I it's, it's okay I probably should have just played that hard flat there uh just to make that a tighter throw I just wasn't anticipating you know, like I said, I just, it's all random to me at first for the drive. So I have to kind of just feel it out. And I mean, I'm just trying to kind of feel it out. I feel like I played great. This is probably the best defense I played the entire game. Um, just this basic with the deep half. If you look here to that left side, that deep half is going to play it. Now, now he hits me with that. So I'm like, okay, he's, he's going to make his reads. He's got that comeback there that does get open. I understand that. I'm not getting great pressure. I was kind of disappointed at points uh, in my Sin 3. Normally, the Sin 3 is super, super good. Um, but I just feel like in this game, it really wasn't the greatest. And he was able to manage the pocket well, too. Um, but anyway, so as we're looking at this, now I put a little curl foot over there. Now he starts doing these random mesh concepts. And I just... Look at this. Uh, this, was, this, this honestly mentally affected me. Because I'm like, I mean, this is what's open. There's nothing open. It's a great defense. He throws the ball. He has Bo Jackson with pick, pick artists. 
And what's crazy is because I have Eric Berry in a hook curl, like he, he lobs it because he knows he missed the read, right? He knows it's a pick. And the fact that he lobs it actually helps him because two people come into the area. So I'm just annoyed by that. But, you know, I mean, you got to keep playing. I feel like I dropped two picks on my first drive, um, at least one for sure right there. And now I'm like, okay, and I'm a little frustrated. So I'm like, all right, now I'm going to blitz. And I actually don't mind the blitz here. I go to the hard flat to try to defend that flat. And he actually hits me with this combo here because up to this point, he has not attacked the right sideline. That's the first time he's going to do that. And it's really, he doesn't do it much, but you see just a basic street corner flat. Honestly, I, I'm not even mad at the defense. Um, I, I just think, you know, he made a good play. He got it out of the pocket. He had to throw it on, on pressure. Like you can't be mad at that. That's pretty decent. Now he goes to these random stuff like the, right here. Like this is kind of like his red zone trips. I feel really good against trips. But then what I don't feel good about is just these random runs that he hits me with. And I'm like, and I just wasn't, I don't know. I guess I just, uh, I, it's not his fault. It's mine. But I wasn't, I was kind of shocked at how well the basic inside zone worked out of some of these formations. So it is what it is. So second and eight. And, and I actually feel like I could have played. I feel like I could have won, won this game a little easier if, if I had played better red zone defense, like right here, you'll see he throws like, I feel like that's fine defense. I wish that mid zone would get down there a little bit more. Like, I feel like that's okay defense, you know? And, and I just did not play great situational football in this game. I feel like, which is what I want to talk about most of the time when you lose Madden games or when Madden games are not, um, when you're, when you're not playing clean, and here, I actually was setting this up. So I was setting up 3-4 odd because that's right now that's my favorite red zone defense in the game. We're going to drop an update on the Patreon for you guys to explain what we're doing out of it. But I go back to Dollar because he comes out in bunch of wide flex. And I'm like, well, he's going to hit me with some kind of random dot. I should have just stuck with my game plan and, um, and just, and just uh, played basic defense, right? Played my 3-4 odd red zone defense. So kind of mistake on my part. Here I start to notice something. I could pretty much throw that verticals wheel all game if he allows me to do that. I've actually really worked hard over the last couple of weeks of trying to figure out how to throw that without getting an overthrow for whatever reason. If you watch my game against Kiv, you'll see it. I overthrow that route way too much. So I've been really putting some effort into learning that throw here again. Um, he actually, I probably could have thrown the short corner. Um, I just, I just didn't, um, I, I ultimately, I just didn't trust it. To be honest. Okay. So, he, he scores on his first drive. I feel like he's struggling. I went right down and scored on my first drive easy. So I feel like we have a significant advantage already here. And then he goes, starts doing random stuff like that. And that's where I'm like, what the heck is this guy doing? Because he literally on the left side, which I guess I get it. But if you look at this coverage here, this is important. So he's playing his little cover three, mans this guy up, which is kind of a standard. This is basically cover three hard flat, but I think he's got a man up here. I don't know for sure. I would assume this is a man coverage. It might be a match. But then he just like randomly throws this guy in a cloud. And I'm like, what the heck? Um, and honestly, if I had been, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily open, but it was open. Uh, you can cut it off. I mean, the worst it would have been was a KO. There's no chance that's a pick, you, in my opinion, because you can cut that off so easy. So that's, I was just like, wow, okay, we're going to do that. So uh, just understanding what he's going to do to that left side. Now, what I didn't notice um, at first and here, this is such a, and this was kind of the, my problem, this game. So, run to him, love this play. And if you really look at this, look who's wide. I mean, circle's wide open. I could probably hit that. But he did a, I mean, he did, he did a good job. But, like, I got to throw the running back right here. I can't hesitate on this. And this is why I lost against Kiv, too. This read for me is just, is, I've just been bad at making this read. And you'll see here, my primary receiver he has, my secondary receiver is running in his own. I got to throw the wrong the triangle. Well, I know that if I wait long enough, he's going to roll back on a triangle. I could have just thrown R1. But just, and that's what I'm talking about when I, and I got actually really lucky, really fortunate. Um, so I should have thrown a pick there. And I, trust me, I will eventually throw a pick on that route because I just was not seeing it right. And sometimes... You really just have to force yourself to kind of, again, you, you have to force yourself to be dis more disciplined in your progression. Here, I know this in route will pretty much never get intercepted if it's a hard flood on the left side. So I just possession catch this. Um, it's not bad defense. 
I probably, like you see here, I mean, there's so much open, but yeah, I mean, and this is another really important point. When you're in the middle of a game and you're trying to make these reads, sometimes what, you, what you'll do, and this is what I did in this game, you're kind of thinking about what he's doing while you're trying to also execute what you're doing. And it makes you slower in your reads because you're trying to, oh, I'm going to look at the coverage and try to see what he's doing. And I just think that was a mistake on my part. You want to be thinking about the coverage before the ball is snapped. But, and this is a terrible play by me. I mean, this is just a bad play. Third and 18, trying to make something happen. I could have made a lot of stuff happen. And this is just undisciplined. This is what I'm talking about. This is open right now. I got to take the route. I got to take this. It's wide open. It's wide open. I have to take this read. I don't take this read, and now I'm getting screamed at. Now, as I'm looking here, again, he users right in here. I got to know that inst instinctively as users in the middle of the field. So where do I want to look? Well, my eyes are going to this tight end, and I kind of thought that I could throw this in here because I get pressured, I do think I get an inaccurate. I don't get a great throw, but this is just bad. I mean, this is just a very bad decision by me. And I got this guy, the sucky part, this guy's standing wide open. I mean, it's just frustrating. Sometimes you make mistakes like that. The key is to learn from those mistakes, understand why you made the mistake, and try your best to learn and move and, and become better for it. So he gets a stop. And honestly, he should have. He he'd already, he'd already he got two interceptions on the same drive, basically. Okay? So there you see the deep half doing what it's doing. And I get a lurk here. And I'm like, man, I'm feeling good. Because I was thinking, okay, with his timing and the routes, um, this is another thing that I want to talk about in just a second as far as route recognition. But I'm just able to – I just know the comeback is the only thing he has. So I just run over there. And I was kind of surprised he threw it. Now, important tip. Route recognition is something that I've got to get better at defensively. And I think a lot of people do look at what routes they're actually running like majority of the time. And based off of that, when you look at the play, you can kind of recognize the play by the routes that they're putting on the field by the first or two, one or first one or two routes you see can probably tell you what the play is. And then it allows you to know, okay, where do I got to be from a user perspective? I think that's one thing you can do to get better as a user um, start trying to recognize the actual plays they're using. I was kind of mad about this. Um, not necessarily mad, but like, okay. So if you look at this adjustment here, okay. This is a third uh, from 32. I don't know for sure what this is on the left. It looks like a soft squat or that cloud, but it never really gets like it just, you see here, like I'm just trying to throw the ball. Cause you see how he's flattening. See how this guy, the defender is going to flatten here. That's why I think it's a soft squat. I just want to throw it up and over. And if it goes out of bounds, it goes out of bounds. But what's frustrating is I feel like that's a great throw. And Calvin Johnson just gets a terrible sideline animation. So it's me. That should have been a first down. So we're 7-7. Seven, seven, and again, I'm going to make another mistake. And it's like, gosh, you got to stop making mistakes like this. This is terrible. This whole, this whole, even the fact that I called this play was not super smart. But look at this. Look at this on the left side. I mean, my crosser just gets absolutely destroyed. My tight end, my tight end gets destroyed too. As you see, they're just, look at him glitching. Look at Gronk. And then my stoop, my, my, me being even dumber, can't just throw the ball away. Again, discipline, you've got to get better, right? You either get better or you, or you continue to form a bad habit. I have to, I have to throw the ball away. I have to throw the ball away. It was a dead play. It was a bad play call. But I can't let a bad play call turn into a bad read, right? So but really annoyed with myself. And now I'm thinking, crap, I got to I gotta stop playing like an idiot. Now I'm going to this cover two, and the reason why is because the way, most of his routes take a really long time to develop. When you're playing somebody and their routes take a long time to develop, blitzing them out of just a basic cover two show, I actually really like that, especially with the way the type of routes he was running. I needed a deep half here to the left side, but I also wanted a cloud to take away the comeback route. And then I was willing to work to this bunch side myself. What I didn't anticipate was just how hard it would be to stop these little drags underneath. And honestly, there's a couple things I was looking back at this game. I go, man, you should have run, man, you you should have ran more man coverage. I should have treated this formation more like a trips tight end than like a bunch. I kept treating it like bunch. I should have treated it more 
like a trips tight end. So next time I play something like this, that's what I'm going to do in terms of, um, and you'll see it later in the game. The, the ending on this game is actually crazy. And, and I don't even really, I, it, it's actually a crazy ending. So anyway, comeback route. Yeah. I mean, just everything was taken away and he keeps trying to throw this bomb. That's why I'm not sure if this is actually for him. I mean, I just, yeah, I'm just kind of surprised. Now here, this is something I should have maybe done a little more. Um, I didn't actually call the right play here. I'll call, I'll talk about when I call the right play, but we're going to send five. I probably should have sent, actually, we're going to send four. I want you to watch this little bluff blitz. It's actually a good adjustment for the way he's playing because I can go over here and help here. So my user responsibility is to get into this left side area of the field, take away a corner or a seam. See, look at that. That's pretty good pressure, right? But then he runs that crosser. So I'm like, ah, okay. And as I'm thinking this out, again, the more you look back at it, film on a formation, especially one you've never faced before, you try to identify where was the space on the field that they kept killing me with. I could have purpled this guy with that three wreck, and that would have taken everything away that he had. So um, that is something. Next, so you see here, purple, hook curl. Now, the send three is not going to get home as fast. I actually dumb out with my, my fat finger or something here. He goes to a corner here. Look at Peppers. It's a free interception. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got so fortunate here. And I'm able to jurtle out of there and uh, take it for six. So I'm like, man, actually, for as bad as I've played, and I'm, I'm winning 14-7 to seven here, I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> Honestly, like I'm, I'm just, I'm just thankful to be, uh, at least in some point. Now he does get ball at halftime, uh, which is, which is really, really, really important. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So here's the deep half, got the curl flat for the crosser. This little yellow here, I think is, is very important. I really do. Um, I just think this, this little yellow just does so much for you. Um, it really helps your user. If I was going to play this again, what I would probably do is I would probably have this hook curl coming down here. I would have this guy in a purple, and then I would be sending them. I'd be sending people off this left edge because you can't – I can go two on two here with my user helping, and then I, I feel just a little better. So, And I could I could drop this guy out as well in that situation so I could hard flat this guy – which allows me to basically have a lot of help to the right side. And again, here, I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm starting to get mad because he's clearly thinking I've got this guy in a curl flat. I don't know what he's thinking. Maybe that the half, I mean, okay, good play call, but I'm just like, that's not open and give me the ball back. You know, I feel like if I get a pick right there, I actually feel like I, I really start to put the game away. Um, and I, I just don't. And now we're back in this. So now I go, okay, that looked a little too open. Let me go back to this deep half here. Now watch the routes he was utilizing here. And this is also, uh, again, something we can learn from. So you see, come back. Now look at this. Deep half is there again, but he catches it this time. And I'm thinking, what the heck am I playing? And now I'm, and, and him catching that was actually terrible for me beyond just the fact that he got downfield. What it showed me was your deep half adjustment is a bad adjustment. Well, for 90% of this game, the deep half adjustment has worked every single time when he's trying to throw that bomb. So the one time he gets kind of a fluky catch animation and I just start, you know, clamming up and I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go back to that. That was a mistake on my part too. You have to kind of start to learn how to trust your adjustment sometimes even if they get what I would call, you have to differentiate between what's a dot and what's a fluky catch because there is a difference between the two. He got a kind of, it was a good, it was, it was a tight throw and he possession caught it. Normally the KO is going to knock that out. Goes to QB draw here. And um, this is where I'm like, okay, all I have to do is stop him in the red zone. If I can stop him in the red zone, I'm in a good position. Um, and he actually calls time out there. I guess that's okay. I'm not, I'm actually shocked he ran QB draw if he was going to call time out there. And this is what I'm thinking in the red zone. I feel like this is pretty bad red zone defense because in the red zone, the, again, this, this backside guy is a, this, this pylons, they're extra defenders here. And I don't have anything for that, but the KO does its job. So as I'm looking back at this and going, yeah, I probably could have done a better job of defending in the red zone and specifically understanding what, my help does here. If I cloud flat out here, half, half this guy, vert hook cloud. 
then everything on the left side is pretty is pretty tough to hit, honestly. Um, now I go to this. This is terrible. This is terrible, 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 terrible. Because now I've got this guy out as a threat up the middle. I know I'm running right to it with my user, and I can't get it. And that's a a really big score, a really big score for him, because he gets ball at half. He could go up one possession and be in control of the game now. So this next 35 seconds, I'm thinking, okay, Cody, this is a big drive for you. You've got to get some points. It, if you can just get a field goal, um, you, you know that would really help. So as I'm as I'm game planning my drive, I'm thinking, okay, let's make let's take special care to not be rattled, and let's just have a good drive and hit the stuff we know is available to us. Well, we know he's been manning this guy up on the short corner. So I go to this combo, and this absolutely destroys him, as you see. Tight end gets up field, and I get a big game. So now I know I have field goal. So now I'm like, okay, well, let's see if we can get a touchdown or at least get a just easier field goal attempt. You know, no big deal here. And I go to this play, and I just – when I go to trips, I just never feel like there's a reason to. But um, why do I go to this play? I'm honestly trying to catch him if this guy was pressed. But as you see, he does not press the left side guy ever, pretty much ever. So that's another thing that I kind of like, okay, next time I play something like this, I got to pay attention to that a little bit more. I get a really good juke from Hayward Bay and I've got 18 seconds. And now I'm like, okay, well, we actually have a legitimate shot at scoring seven. And this seven would be a big deal because it allows us to stay in control of the game going into the second half. Even though I feel like in a lot of ways, we've played a pretty bad first half. So I go to the RPO, get out of there with Archer, almost break it for a touchdown. And I was mainly just saying, like, okay, would he give? I wonder if he would give it to me. Uh, he doesn't. And so now I'm setting up some RPOs, and I'm just, I'm, I'm not gonna kill. I, I have three timeouts, so that was the other factor of that. So I have uh, multiple timeouts, which is helpful as well. So I should go back to the RPO here. I just feel like the way his defense is structured, and I don't. I go to this wide trail play. I'm pretty sure this is. I don't know that this, or actually, the running back might be there. Yeah, I'm able to hit the running back, a possession catch it. The cool part about Dre Archer that I personally like is, for whatever reason, I feel like out of all the running backs in this game, his catch in traffic is incredible. I don't know why it is, but it is. Uh, right there, that play could have just as easily been Durham and probably been more effective if it was. But now I'm first and goal, and I'm thinking, don't let me get a touchdown here because this is going to really help me. I go to this play out of trips. I just think this is a pretty tough play to defend. Um, because you have to stop the run. And then this, if I just get a yard, I mean, I feel like for a yard, that's not, that's, that's a pretty good play. I actually personally, this is just my opinion. Um, and he, he tries to bomb me, but doesn't. And we're going to go to halftime and try to nothing really to talk about there, but let's get into the second half. So I actually personally feel like RPOs, um, are more effective than stretches and stuff in the red zone. Uh, but I don't know if I'm right on that or not. Maybe that's just cause I truly don't like to run the ball. I really like RBOs because I just feel like they stretch the field horizontally. It's it's harder to defend than a run. Okay, so this is what I'm kind of trying. Okay, I'm thinking. Okay, I gotta stop this bomb play because he hit. And I, I honestly put a little too much energy into trying to defend the bomb. To be honest, as I'm walking this back, I'm like, you you had that deep half, and now I'm starting to do all kinds of stuff defensively to try to defend this bomb play as opposed to just continue to play good defense. It's not like he's just walked down the field on me. Um, every single drive, there's been a chance for a stop. There's been a, a dropped interception. There's been something. So it's not like he's just having the field day with, with my defense, even though it feels like that when you're playing sometimes. He's having to work. And so I should have trusted my defense a little bit more. He goes to this, and he just goes back to this inside zone. And this must be something that he's got labbed up for dollar. Um, and it was a pain in the butt. I mean, it... I'm surprised he didn't go to it more because it is it was a pain in the butt, 100%. So first and 10 situation here, and, and the thing that I'm starting to think is I'm like, well, I haven't really – I kind of feel like I haven't gotten a lot of pressure. As I watch the tape, I'm getting great pressure. As you see there, Gronk coming through the A-gap again. I'm getting good pressure, and I wish – I wish I kind of would have just maybe sent the a gap more. Um, I don't know. Looking back at this game, but I I'm kind of getting to this position defensively where, especially with the way he's playing, 
his routes just take forever to get open. So I'm thinking if I could get some pressure, and I think that UC does get the A-gap picked up there. Um, but I'm thinking if I could get some pressure, I would really be able to, you know, shut this game down quick. So I'm kind of going for get a stop, get the ball back, and win the game is, is really what I'm thinking here. So third and inches, he comes out in this random trips formation that he only calls like, you know, twice a game. And I go to one of my favorite defenses for trips. I feel like if he throws it, I'm good. He goes to the RPO. He falls forward for a yard. I'm not mad at that defense. I'm not mad at that result. Um, I wish we would have been a little bit more uh, tougher to run on there. So now I go to DB fire. I should go to DB fire here. I'm going to go to DB fire one of these times. You'll see what it does to him. And I honestly might have, I probably should have played more DB fire here. I go to a little cross man setup. I just want to see. Um, so you see how I'm kind of starting to say, okay, I need to start cross manning him and he has a touchdown. I mean, the corner out of top was wide open. Obviously, you know, it's something different. So he's probably used to seeing zone every play. Then you go, man, it's there. There's that part of it. It's like a change up, but he did have a touchdown. So I'm like, okay, I didn't really love how that looked. <laughs> you got a touchdown. I do like though, manning this guy up on this guy because it takes away the flat. It takes away the crosser. It takes away a lot that they can run here. Um, and you see here again, I'll take that crosser and I feel like everything's kind of bagged. I should have sent the, should have sent the flat. I didn't. And he's kind of just inching down the field, but this is not easy. Um, I mean, it, it, he might, you know, he might say it's an easy drive for him, but it doesn't look easy. Um, it looks like, you know, we're able to stop a lot of what he wants to do now. Here, uh, we're going DB fire two. I love this play call. And I'm, and I'm going to run man on the left and zone on the right. And I like this because it's going to gas him up and it's going to keep him in the pocket. Man, if Peppers picks that, the game's over. If Peppers picks that, the game's over, in my opinion. So I'm feeling really good about the defense. And, and honestly, I mean, he's taken the majority of the third quarter to drive down. And now what do I do? DB fire two looked really good. So what do I do? Well, let's go back to cover three buzz. Just kind of like, what are you doing, you know? And, and I'm like, well, he's going to have pass pro. He's going to block the tight end. No, he's sitting five out, man. You should have just sent DB fire too. This really frustrated me because I'm trying to use this. And, and, and ultimately, it's my fault. I kind of hesitate. Like right there, I hesitate. And I just get behind it. And he gets, um, he gets to the goal line. Now, thankfully, he didn't get a touchdown. And now, guess what I'm doing? I'm like, okay, I'm not making the same mistake I made on the first possession. I am getting into my red zone defense. I'm going, I'm going to three, four odd here. And as you see, this is why I like three, four odd. It's the same concept as dollar with the a gap blitz and nickel three, three, five odd or three, three, five normal, but it's three, four odd. And they do a significantly better job of stopping the run, like a significantly better job. So I'm thinking, okay, here we go. Second and goal. He's going to run the stretch little rookie. This is the only thing I don't love this against, but I actually, and, and you see why, <laughs> like, um, make a terrible user play. Luckily, I'm able to get the stop. I also notice here that Reggie White's fatigued, um, which is annoying. I don't know why he would be fatigued. But anyways, so he comes out third and goal, and I'm thinking, okay, I just have to stop the stretch. So we go to 60 out, Jax. I want to make him have to pass here. I just feel like he can't. And Reggie White, even though he's fatigued, puts his life on the line for the squad, and he's able to make a tackle. So going into the fourth quarter, he ends up taking his three. I thought he would go for that, but he takes his three. So I'm thinking this game is over, right? I think the game's over. Watch this. Kickoff. I'm going down. I get that stupid strip animation. Thank God I recover the ball. Thank God I recover the ball. He's pissed. He thinks he's getting cheated. May have been, but huh. so anyways, bad, sad day for me. So I'm thinking here, I just want to get the clock moving. So I wanted to go to an RPO. And I didn't feel really good about the one to the right, so I went to bunch tight end. I like bunch tight ends RPO as well, uh, just a little different style of an RPO. But that being said, first and 10, I actually fell out of bounds. So now I'm like, okay, let's just get into the offense here and uh, go to Durham. And if you look at this, um, I mean, I feel really good about this route combo. I feel like this is the, this is the route combo for how he's playing defense. He's not stopping pretty much any route, right? He's having some good user alerts in the middle, but he's really not stopping anything we're doing out of this route combo. So I'm thinking, okay, when I need a dot, I'm going to go to Durham because I don't think he can really stop it if, and this is the big caveat, if I am able to make the right read, 
Okay. I think this route combo is hard for him to stop. Okay. I think his user, I think he's having a lot of a very, a, a ton of difficulty stopping it. So go to it again. Guess who's open again? Hayward Bay. And he, I'm pretty sure he dropped that defensive end into a, a hard flat. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, you know, so, so again, like I feel really good about what we're doing, uh, offensively. Now I'm, I think he's in double a gap, but it might be that nickel wide nine stuff with the, with the a gap blitz. And I wasn't really paying attention here. Um, so he's had a tendency to go to this cover two. It's honestly a bad call by me, but I'm thinking, okay, he's in cover two. So I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, just hit your flat because this guy is going to go to square, right? And he he does. He totally does. He's guarding this guy. But I just get such a weird animation. And he almost is actually able to make a play, which is kind of scary. So, anyway. So, 21-17. And, I mean, I feel like, man, if I, I feel like if I score seven, the game's over. I feel like there's just no way for him to, him to come back. You never should think like that. Um, because it comes down to you need to execute this play perfectly. So again, like I said, I I feel like he runs this guy on a cloud a lot when he's trying to get aggressive. So we go to flood. We got the flat here. This is the perfect play call. It's a touchdown, but I get screamed at. And that's why pressure bus pipes and you know you have to ultimately like that's a part of the game too. So third and twenty one here. I go to Durham. And I try to change it up on him a little bit. Haven't shown this yet. It's basically the same idea. But I knew he was going to go to that post. I'm going to the drag every time. Able to get out of there with Archer. I make one bad little user play. That should have been an easy first down. Ends up being fourth and inches. So I'm like, okay, D kick. I kicked against Young Kiv. I'm not doing that again. We're going for it. Because even if we get stopped, like, he still has to go to score a touchdown. I don't know. I just feel like this year's game, it's hard to stop you. Uh, hard to stop, get a stop. So we go to Henry, and uh, I actually go down there. Now, you could have just – I could have just scored there. Honestly, uh, looking back, it's not the end of the world um, because I do put him in a situation where he can still hold the three, and even though I could take timeouts away – and, and ultimately, as you'll see here in a second, it doesn't end up really mattering that much from a game management. I'm able to take it to the two-minute warning, force him to have to be in a position where um, he might have to use timeouts. My, that was my thought process. But unfortunately, or like just kind of like a as you look at the as you look at it play out, didn't really end up mattering. I did want to. I I definitely wanted to score seven because I wanted to go up two possessions. So I didn't want to risk like some kind of fluky thing happening on third down or fourth down. We're able just to get seven. I feel like the game's over. I feel like the game is completely over. And I and I feel like you come out and I'm playing great defense. And watch this right here. So um, I go to DB fire two. I got a cloud there. I'm going to send five. I feel like he's going to struggle with this. So, and you see, he does. He gets screamed at. That should be, you know, there's potential that could be a D-line pick. And 28 to 17. 28 to 17, right? Now, the mistake I make is what you're going to see here. I didn't anticipate a couple things that he might do uh, on this drive. He kind of starts doing some things just a, just a little different. Um, it was good on his part. What you'll see here, I go to that same, pretty much same defense, right? He hits me with this corner out to the left side. Good read by him. And honestly, I, as a defensive player, I need to, ch I need to maybe do something a little different there and, and probably go back to that deep half from the corner, the curl flat, and then maybe something here with a roll coverage that way. That would have been a little better. Now I'm going to just some man-ups. I actually love this defense. I feel like this is a great defense. Um, and then there you see there's that deep end zone KO. That's why the KOs are important. And it's and then I notice here Randy Moss is actually tired thanks to the good old fatigue glitch being back in the game. So we had to sub him out because we blitzed him in DB Fire 2, which is ridiculous. Uh, but anyways, so we sub him out, we put Tillman in and I go back to this and I just, mm, I'm just looking back at this. I'm like, what am I doing here? So I, I, I still want to send five. I back off the cloud. I feel like this isn't terrible. This guy's going to take the flat. This guy would take the corner, make a tough throw. And my user's just not using nothing. I'm using nothing. I've got to be uh, better uh, from a user perspective because that's the only route he had. I was what I, and this is what I sometimes do. Sometimes when you start drawing up defenses, you watch your defense to see if they actually guard it. You got to just use her. You got to just use her. 
right? It's kind of like think like, and then we go to this and we get dar darted and he gets seven. So I'm like, gosh, what are you doing, Cody? So we go to the deep half here. This isn't bad, but I've just got to recognize he's got nothing. He's got nothing but that corner. I got to get over there myself. Also, the deep half was useless because of the space on the field. He goes to this little wing close. And if you look at this real quick, I, I thought this, I just meant, I meant this guy to be manned up on the running back. Um, cause I thought there's just, that's the only thing you would have even possibly have again, completely random formation. Never seen it before. Throws the running back, gets the running back in traffic. And I'm like, gosh, you know, I am able to recover the onside. So I'm thinking, okay, just get a first down. The game's over. No big deal. I've been in this situation. I don't want to do the same thing I did against Kiv, which in this situation, I, um, ran the ball three times and settled for three. Honestly, looking back though, because of the clock, it wouldn't have been the worst decision. Um, but the thing about it is I just felt like he could not stop Durham. I really did. I felt like he could not stop Durham. So if you look at this play closely, I know he's going to play a little bit more aggressive because he's got to get a stop. Like, I know that. So he mans this guy up. I was honestly anticipating that he would man this guy up. But right here, this is where things get bad. So the blitz actually gets picked up. So as you see here, He's got this drag taken away. His user's kind of working there. Now, I could throw this because he's kind of bailing back. Obviously, this is all happening, though, in real time. What I absolutely have to anticipate, though, is I see this guy cutting up field. I'm thinking, okay, I can throw this right here. But for some reason, I, I wait just a little bit too long. And what you'll see, so I should, be, I should have already thrown the ball. I wait just a little bit too long. Obviously, you're going to see he's going to pick it. But the important thing, this is the same pick I threw in the beginning of the freaking game on the same route combo in pretty much the same part of the field. As you see, where do I got to go with the ball? I got to go here right now. If I, if I step up, I now can't throw this. I can't throw this. I can't because he can use for that. So he's going here. I know that he's going to do it. He's done it every single time. R1 would be wide open. The game would be over. Instead, I throw a pick. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You just made that mistake, you know, like, come on, you know. And that's where, again, you got to push past the mistakes. You got to learn from the mistakes. You got to be better. Um, that's part of growth. Obviously, you're not, you know, you're never going to play a game where you don't make mistakes, I feel like, especially in Madden. So very rarely are you going to play perfect. But I made that mistake twice in the same game, in the same part of the field, in the same exact coverage, pretty much. So I wish I would be. I got to be better. So here, I honestly feel, I still don't feel terrible, but again, that vert hook's doing nothing. It's got to be a curl flat for me or a hard flat because now I got to midpoint both of those zones. And he's able to cook and move. And I'm thinking, you know, man, he's going to, you know, I just got to hold him to three and we'll go to overtime, basically, is my thought process. Because, I mean, the ball's on the, the ball's in a position in the field where it's like, you know, obviously you want to pick, but, Mentally, you're thinking, okay, I got to hold a three. So I'm watching for the corner. He doesn't run the corner. So you see I'm able to come back here. I feel like that was great defense. And honestly, maybe I should have been in that defense a lot more. Second and 10, 24 seconds. And he's going to he's gonna hit me here, I think. I don't remember. I go to, I go to kind of an aggressive defense here. And I'm trying to – I think this cloud could play – actually, this is more passive than I thought. But, look, look at that corner out get over the top. That guy's right there, but he catches it. Now, I this is where it's just kind of like a terrible ending. So, I think he thinks he goes out of bounds. He does not go out of bounds, and the game just ends. <laughs> GG's. So, anyways, little film room. Uh, I don't know if this was form or not, but it was a good game. I made a lot of mistakes, and I got to be better, learn from those mistakes – but I think this talks a little bit about how um, it's just super important. It's just so important to be more systematic and understand your pre-snap, post-snap reads, all that stuff matters. And you've got to be able to execute those in situations where you only have a couple of seconds. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to check out our full eBooks that explain everything that I do, join the Patreon. Links in the description down below.